Hey, so today is a really, uh, it's a really big day. Um, I am going in there to uh, buy some hurricane colors. Uh, it's time to, uh, now that we got the fuselage all set up, it's time to paint. So I've got, uh, I've spent some time looking at a few different choices. Uh, I've got them right here. So we're gonna go in and uh, get some paint, get some rollers. Um, gotta find a piece of glass and then uh, I'll be all, set to start uh, painting this little warbird. All right. All right, so we got the paints and uh, the uh, paints in the car. And now, uh, uh, let's see, we also got, uh, we went to Aircraft Spruce, picked up some more glue. Uh, I only had about maybe 20% left in that bottle and I don't want anything to slow me down. So I got some more glue and uh, uh, a couple other, I needed a couple of uh, terminals and um, some little boots that go over top of the uh, terminals on the battery. And other than that, um, I'll see you at the shop. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Um, we're back in the shop today. Um, you saw at the beginning of the video, I went out to Aircraft Spruce, to Home Depot. We got uh, my hurricane colors right there. Um, I chose just a touch lighter um, in color than uh, than the actual hurricane colors. I uh, just wanted the overall um, plane to be slightly lighter in tone than the really dark colors. Um, it's pretty hot out here in California and I'm gonna be flying out here and um, I'd rather sacrifice a little bit of truism for uh, just a slightly lighter in color airframe. Um, they're dark colors anyway. I mean, they're gonna definitely soak up some light, but. Uh, so I flipped the plane over and in my mind, I was done with the bottom, but for some reason I did the three sides, but I didn't get the bottom. Um, I don't know why I didn't realize I didn't have it done, but I didn't, so I'm doing it now. Um, one of the other things that needed to be done, um, it's the last, uh, the last thing because everything else is completed, um, is uh, these little guys right here drain grommets. So you can imagine the plane sitting on its tail wheel most of the time and when it's sitting on the ground and uh, you just think about where does water go if water condensation was to collect on the inside. Well in this particular plane none of the cross members actually um, are in contact with the fabric. They're all below it. But this plywood ridge right here is actually where water is going to run all the way down to these two points right here. So we're going to put a drain grommet right there in that corner and we're going to put another one right here in this corner. And so those are the two that we'll need on the bottom of the fuselage. Um, what you do is similar to the inspection ring here. You uh, glue this in place and then you come back and you want to just off the edge of the Putting it right in the corner between the plywood and this plywood, which is part of the tail wheel um, mount. I'll be putting this just right in that corner right there. And that will allow a place for water to escape. Have, should any water ever get in there. 
Um, and uh, you get a uh, just a small doily over top of those and I'm looking for what I want to use for that diameter. I'll, uh, I'll figure that out and then I'll show it to you here. All right. All right, so I've decided to use the bottom of uh, the bottom of my uh, one of my epoxy mixing cups. That seems to be about right to me. This is a little too big, so uh, I'll just use I'll use this. And we'll draw ourselves out a couple of these. And then of course we'll cut those out. So Once all of this is dry, we'll come back with a soldering iron. Works really good for melting the fabric and stuff out of the inside of the hole. So, so we'll uh, later on, that'll be one of the final things we do after we paint and everything. We'll come back and just melt out the inside of those. after we paint and then paint a bunch of roundels, <laughs> bottom of the wing, top of the wing, side of the fuselage, um, it's a bunch of steps, so, okay. And uh, just like the other parts, we uh, put glue on the part, put glue on the uh, fabric, and then we get this position where we want it, right there in that corner. Let me just give that a little little time to set up there. Could have given that some more time, that's for sure. And then we'll just do like we did before with our popsicle stick and come in here and get this uh, pressed down nicely in the corner. And I'm gonna let that sit for just a couple minutes. And I'll wipe the excess off of there. All right, well that's uh, doing its thing. I'm gonna just continue on filling the weed uh, the rest of the way back here. Close to having this uh, done. It's 
good temperature in here, so I see it's already starting to already starting to dry, which is awesome. finish on there so all right I'll get this finished up I got to mix a little more um, and then we'll uh, we'll hop to something else all right so while that's uh, curing I'm gonna go I'm gonna I've set the iron for 225 degrees um, and then I'm, I'm gonna go along and I'm going to check all the tapes um, um, from the all the uh, bottom uh, all the bottom tapes here and make sure that they're all ironed down good and that'll get us uh, that'll get me ready to uh, start painting the bottom of the fuselage and what my intent is is to actually kind of uh, kind of roll uh, I'm going to be using a, a roller technique with the uh, acrylic enamel um, exterior paint that you saw me get at Home Depot and we'll be uh, we'll be putting that on uh, I bought the plastic because um, to me if you just use a regular paint tray you end up with uh, like ridges in your roller so by pouring the paint on a piece of glass or plastic um, that'll actually be my paint tray that'll keep everything smooth and uh, and what I intend to do is I'm going to work in cross coats. So I'm going to work across the fuselage um, first this way. And then when I come back with the second coat, I'll go long ways this way. And uh, we'll go from there. But I'll be painting the, uh, I'll be painting the color. Um, I'm going to kind of use the tape line as the, uh, I'll paint from the tape line over. And then when I come back and do the fuselage side, I'll actually maybe tape this off just below the curve. And, uh, and then my camouflage colors will be from that line on with just a slight reveal of the bottom color from the side. So, um, but right now I am gonna go through and uh, check all these tapes. So, all right, get the iron, take care of that. And then we'll be ready to uh, start rolling some paint and see how uh, see how this paint lays out on the uh, uh, on the sealed fabric. Um, the uh, this glue has a uh, has a slight tack to it, so it should be it should be awesome for adhesion. So, um, all right, let's do it. All right, so this is the color I'm using for the uh, the bottom of my uh, airplane and um, this is to replicate the uh, uh, color called sky um, that the uh, early hurricanes had painted on the bottom so we'll uh, start with that one of course all right that's freshly mixed and just going to get a little bit of it on my plastic here Oh, holy cow. That's a problem. All right, so we got some paint on the plastic. And then we're just gonna take our, take our roller. It's gonna keep our roller nice and smooth, so. Like I said, we'll start out by just covering the, uh, finishing tape here.
and the best part is it smells like uh, it smells like you paint your house. So nothing wrong with that. All right, so I got the I got the color on this uh, front section, that one coat going across the fuselage this way. Now I'm using uh, I'm using flat paint, so I'll show you. Let me show you exactly what I'm using, so you can see. Um, this is my green color right here, and uh, much my camera's making it look a lot brighter than it actually is. It's um, so it's the Bear Marquee um, exterior flat. And it's the uh, paint and primer all in one, um, and that's uh, that's what I'm that's what I'm using. So this, since this still has shine on it, you can see it's just starting to dry a little bit, kind of right up in here. Um, but it's great when you actually uh, get some paint on because then that reveals to you exactly what you've got underneath, <laughs> like what. What did your finish actually look like? And uh, so far, I'm really happy. I mean, my tapes, my tapes, and everything look—they uh, look really good um, in here. So nice and even and straight and all of that. Um, like I mentioned before, this interior is going to get painted with an actual engine paint, uh, which is a Detroit diesel color. Um, it's made by a company called uh, Duplicolor, and. I'll paint that last so that I can mask everything else off and then spray that because it comes in uh, spray cans. So I'm gonna let this uh, I'm gonna let this dry, and uh, I'm trying not to touch anything. And really, it's it's pretty clean. Not a lot, not a lot of issues really anywhere. So I'm gonna let that completely dry, and we'll use that front plywood section of the bottom of the fuselage to kind of tell us what we need to know for everything else and uh, however many coats we need there. I'm kind of hoping that we're going to get this done with, uh, I mean I'd love to do it in two two coats, but I really, my, something inside me is saying it's going to be three. Uh, but looking at this, uh, looking at this first coat, I'm actually pretty impressed um, how much of it, it how much it's actually covering so uh, you know two coats is possible um, I don't know we'll see that's why we're doing this front section first on the bottom just to see where we end up but uh, if we need three then we'll do uh, we'll do three um, whatever it takes when I get to doing the rest of the fuselage on the side and on the top I'm gonna actually use the brown color for everything I'm going to paint that on everything and then I'm going to come back and put the green uh, over top of it so the green areas will actually be um, a little bit thicker than um, than the rest of the the rest of the area because it's however many coats we get on the brown will be what it is and then um, when we paint the green over top of that that's just going to be a little bit extra so uh, yeah all right so um, uh, now, while that's drying, I'm going to switch over here and I'm going to uh, get the second coat of urethane on these so that we can start covering those. And then after I get that done, then I can actually grab my landing gear to start putting the fabric on those. So uh, I do have to make a couple brackets for the uh, for the band brakes. Um, so there'll be one more hole that has to be drilled in the uh, in the gear leg for the uh, band brake mount. And uh, it uses one of the existing holes plus another hole. And so I'll figure out what the location of that is. I've got the material right here. It's uh, 
the 2024 um, 2024 T4 uh, metal right there, same as the same as the mounting brackets on the wing. So I can I'll have to get those made, and uh, maybe I will get those holes drilled before I uh, before I actually do that. Um, so anyway, it's probably uh, yeah. Let's get some urethane going. All right, so that is still uh, still drying. It's uh, the uh, temperature in here is starting to drop because it's uh, 20 minutes to six, and you can still see some area of sheen there. It's really flat in here, and it is dry, but not completely back there. So. Um, All right, so the uh, the front got dry enough, um, completely dry, so I was still here after doing all my urethaning. Um, so I went ahead and put a second coat on, and now that I see the second coat, I do believe it's just gonna need one more, so. Uh, but, uh, so I'm working now, working back over the open area with the first coat. And uh, I did notice that uh, as I roll it on, um, this is how the, the roller just sits here on the, or the paint is just on the plastic. So, so I'm just, this gives me a nice smooth, uh, nice smooth roll. And then when I come up here, um, I have to, uh, What's great is that the uh, the adhesive has completely sealed the fabric, so I don't have to worry about pushing any fabric through or pushing any paint through the fabric and and uh, having it get on any of the members on the uh, inside. Um, now, I did notice up here because I'm pressing on it that the glue that's on the bottom side. I did notice that the glue that's on the bottom the bottom side of the fabric. It, uh, it wants to kind of stick a little bit to the, uh, to the cross members under there, but I, I found out if I just tap the fabric, it vibrates and it comes loose right away. So, um, yeah. All right. So this is, uh, this is working out good. And uh, I'll keep going back to the end here. And uh, then I'll wrap it up for the night. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish painting this. And then I will uh, check back in with you uh, before I take off. All right. I got the rest of that, uh, rest of that painted with that, with that first coat. Uh, the first coat from here back. From right here back. And then this is all second coated. Um, Three coats uh, should be should be just right, so uh, I think that'll uh, that'll be a nice lightweight, not overdone uh, paint job, which is what I'm after. I don't. There's no reason to uh, just add a bunch of bunch of weight. The the main goal here is get it covered with uh, paint where it's light fast. Um, and you know this the thing the thing I find interesting about this method um, and the reason why I like it so much is you know you 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 put this on your house and it sits outside in the Sun for 10 years 15 years um, it, I mean it can withstand an awful lot of uh, sunlight day in and day out and you know this plane's gonna live in a hangar and uh, it's only going to see the sun when I take it out. So um, as far as like longevity and lifespan and, uh, you know, this acrylic enamel will 
Um, it'll remain flexible. Um, it shouldn't have any cracking issues. Uh, so um, I like it and uh, it's, uh, it's gonna work great for me. So um, yeah, I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, it's great to get to this stage where we're applying some color and now I think we'll have a good rhythm where while this is drying, we'll be covering other things and then we'll just keep moving forward and as those are drying, we'll be covering other things. We'll get to these wings before too long and uh, before we know it, we'll be somewhere out here in the middle assembled. So assembled uh, probably prior to taking it to uh, Camarillo where I tend to house it. So all right. Thanks for hanging out with me and uh, I will catch you later. Bye.